<laughs> All right, we are live, live. today uh, with uh, some amazing, awesome filmmakers from all across uh, the United States. Everyone here is going to be speakers and presenters at Venture Workshop, which is uh, a workshop that uh, we kind of host every year that's been just a collaborative um, time where we all get to connect and hang out and chat about things that we love and inspire others and encourage everyone. So we're going to let everyone take a second uh, and introduce themselves. Um, and we're going to start with uh, Caleb and Elaine. Yeah. Hi. I'm Caleb, obviously. And I'm Elaine, obviously. We're uh, KJ Productions and we're like really stoked and really happy. Like seeing everybody on this screen, it just like makes me giddy because it's like ah oh, like quarantine and like seeing everybody we're just really stoked that we get to be a part of this so. yes yeah and we're in orlando i don't know yeah. if people knew that so it's like super sunny and beautiful today tomorrow it's probably going to be like a bazillion degrees and 98 <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I hear you guys. Um, I feel like every time I'm going out for like, just to see people is so exciting. Like um, the other day I was running around my neighborhood just to go for a jog and was yelling, good morning at every other person. And I think I startled a couple people, but it's like, that's like the real feeling. It's like, oh, it's just so exciting to see people right now. <laughs> so we're, we're excited. Awesome. Uh, Who's next? Matt, you need to uh, let us know what's going on, buddy. It's me, Matt. it's me, yes. Oh man, uh, so glad to be here. I'm Matt Johnson. Uh, I make YouTube videos, and I'm also going to be speaking at this point of in. This is my third. This will be my third time speaking. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Yes, so fun. Oh my goodness. Um, surviving in Texas. They just reopened the state for weddings a few days ago, which is kind of terrifying. <laughs> but um, we'll see what happens. Are there like restrictions on it? If it's indoors, it is 25% capacity. So they have a restriction to that amount if it's an indoor wedding. But if okay. it's an outdoor wedding, I think it's just kind of like, as long as you're obeying social distancing, you can just get married and have as many people as you want. But it's also Texas, so it'll be like 100 degrees outside with that many people. So it, yeah, I don't know. I, I love Texas, the great country of Texas. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wow. Nice. <laughs> um, let's go with uh, Mr. Uh, Aaron Tharp. Fellow Texan. Uh, I, Fellow too, Texan. Am, am living in this, this sweltering heat. Yes. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm Aaron with 31 Films. This is going to be my first year speaking adventure, and I'm pretty pretty stoked about it. Uh, I got a, got a solid group of people here, so I'm, I'm pretty excited to connect. Um, but, yeah, we're I'm one of seven of us full time at 31 films. So I'm a small cog in, in the machine that makes us go and uh, really pumped to connect. Dude, well, we're Welcome. obviously stoked to have you. I mean, it's uh, we're, uh, I feel like we got the big hitters on this uh, whole crew of speakers this year. So we're excited to have y'all join and obviously hang for more than one day or a couple hours than what was last time whenever we connected so i know yeah. <laughs> it's always like two minutes of coffee while we're in each other's state so i'm excited to, <laughs> to actually that's hang true <laughs> awesome uh well let's uh introduce uh sarah and rick another new team on the, on the venture team hi yeah i'm sarah and i'm rick did you just say ricked no <laughs> and I'm Rick. <laughs> Our company's Pin Weddings. Uh, we are in Oklahoma, so not quite as hot as our brethren to the south, but uh, it's also tornado season here. So, you know, oh. going on wasn't bad enough. Yeah, we've got a change of severe weather tonight. I don't know. If yeah, I didn't know that. I'm weather aware. <laughs> um, but yeah, as far as the, all the stuff uh, with being quarantined, we're kind of homebodies to begin with. So uh, the hardest part for us, I think, has just been staying on top of reschedules and existing edits. But like being home, we're kind of like, we're good. <laughs> I got my cat. <laughs> I, I think the buzzword right now is stoked. And we are definitely yes. stoked as well to be. Uh, to be <laughs> um, so yeah, thanks. 
<laughs> Muzzle wars. I, I need a haircut. If you if you have oh. if you're wondering why I'm I'm bushy. I'm <laughs> We're hoping that you can bring that to uh, Denver. You know, I think that would be a great hit. You can do some modeling yeah. for everybody too. I think the it long can work hair. out. I know. <laughs> love it love it awesome um also let's go ahead and meet uh obviously everybody knows forestry films hello hi guys david harmony it is what it's we're in california it's 95 degrees so it's oh it's getting it's well, getting up good. there yeah and can you harmony has graced us with her presence she came out of the editing cave for a couple around, minutes for a couple minutes so she's gonna go <laughs> The hardest part for us has just been uh, like life with a toddler for uh, two months. Just no daycare, like, getting work done. Yeah, it's, it's, Same. It's been rough. Yeah. But I was making fun we, because <laughs> I was saying quarantine for everyone else is like another day. <laughs> Why not? Okay. I go to the gym. A couple of Okay, well, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> no, we hear you guys. It's like been really intense for us. So, yeah. Yeah. We'll touch more on that in a little bit, though. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Levi, what's up? Hey, um, I'm Levi. For most people that are attending Venture, you may see my name in emails, and I typically run the beat behind the scenes and help produce the event. Uh, I also am part of Gamut with Kaylin and we're in a creative studio called Set. So that's me for those that know me. Um, but so far we're just surviving, like David and Harmony, we are trying to keep life alive with a two and a half year old and it is a little crazy, um, but we're doing the best we can. A lot of bike rides, a lot of walking. And if anybody doesn't know, uh, venture does not happen without Levi. I feel like Levi uh, really carries it and, and makes it amazing and successful. So he's the one that's kind of more behind the scenes, but also uh, connects with a lot of people. So Levi, I just want to say thanks so much for all the work that you've put in and continually put in over the years. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right, our good buddy, Nick. What's up, man? Hey. Uh, how's everyone doing? Um, my name is Nick Miller. I co-host a podcast called How to Film Weddings. That's, I think, how I got the invite to be a part of this. Um, no, it is. <laughs> um, I was, I was, I was attended of the very first venture that happened in uh, what was like 2017 or so. And so it's really cool to uh, go and be on that side. But then I'm really looking forward to go and be on this side of things and help out and teach and host a podcast and all that kind of stuff over there. Yeah. Yes. Man, we're excited to have you this year. I know uh, John Bunn was a little, you know, sad that you weren't able to make it just like we were. And we still have a mug ready for you. So we will, <laughs> we will get you Can't that mug. That. Can't wait for that. <laughs> New branding. So we just want to make sure you have the best mug possible. Mm. I, want it. I want it. I want it. Lindsay, go ahead and introduce yourself. Uh, what's up? My name is Lindsay, and um, I watched all of Matt Johnson's YouTube videos, and now I'm speaking at Venture. So, you know, <laughs> uh, the, the dream is, is alive and well. No, uh, so I, I make up one half of Larev Films. It's my wife and I, Cherish, and she is definitely the heart and soul of our business and why we're successful. I'm just the, the attention hog, and so um, she, you know, <laughs> <laughs> makes me do all this stuff so i'm i'm super stoked to be part of this amazing group you guys are all incredible and i can't wait to help other filmmakers i know that um, any minor success that we have is because of people that have helped us and stuck their neck out for us and so mm -hmm. i'm excited to be able to do that for other people Definitely, man. Well, we're excited to have you this year, and uh, it's really been incredible to kind of see where you were last, you know, even just last fall to where you guys are now and a lot of the successes you guys have um, acquired. So I think that's well-spoken, and I yep. love the new branding and everything. It's just La Last great. fall, I was filming weddings, and now uh, <laughs> not. So, <yeah. laughs> 
come a long Same. way. Come a long way. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Eric has uh, taken a break from running to be a part of this uh, meeting. So we're excited <laughs> to have him here. <laughs> uh, yeah, I haven't gotten my run in yet today. Uh, it's uh, been really focused on that in quarantine, ironically. Um, my my name's Eric. I am a photographer and filmmaker in Chicago. I'm not currently in Chicago. We're at a cabin, our friend's parents' cabin, because three children in an 1,100 square foot apartment in Chicago during a pandemic is not very fun. So <laughs> we decided to come out to the cabin and we have no idea how long we're gonna be here, but we're just gonna kind of play it by ear. Yeah, I, uh, I also do YouTube and I've been really getting into running. So I'm running every day. It's really fun. Love it. Love yeah. it, man. Well, obviously, you're also going to be uh, one of the main MCs for Venture. And this is going to be, I think, the third time. And I think you bring such this high level of intensity, so much so that I think last time people were shoving things in your mouth just to <laughs> win something. So that was, you were taking one for the team, you know? We decided yeah. we were going to host this live so that everybody could really appreciate you much more later this year. When oh my <laughs> There's so much pressure. That story about people shoving things in my mouth, I feel like needs some context. <laughs> oh, yeah. Do you oh, want to just we're explain good. a little bit or are you going to leave that no. open to uh, I'm just going to leave it open to interpretation. Also, okay, there we go. there's a television from Matt Johnson pointed out that there's a television from like 2001 here. I don't even know if it works. It's got like flowers underneath it. I'm just surprised you have internet there it's not like dial up or something like that you're actually able to call in it's like a weird there's like a couple state parks in illinois illinois is not that exciting um but this is like a community of a bunch of townhome cabins it's a really weird like midwest vibe but no one's here because of a pandemic um <laughs> it's just very weird i feel like we're living yeah. in uh like breaking bad or ozark or something like mm. laundering Ooh. money Ozark. Oh, yeah. Well, at least you're surrounded by um, antiques. So that's really, really <laughs> yeah. exciting. So um, right, next on the list. <laughs> yeah. Last but certainly not least is the one and only Mr. John Bunn. Yes, I was hoping that was me. <laughs> no, I wasn't forgotten about <laughs> What's up? <laughs> well, yes, I am John Bond. I'm the other half. I'm the co-host of the How to Film Weddings podcast. I just do what Nick kind of tells me to do. Uh, I'm the eye candy. Um, he's, you know, the ear candy. <laughs> but yeah, we started this podcast 102 episodes ago. I, I was able oh. to be at Venture last year and loved it. Loved the community. Can't wait to be back love this wedding film community and doing everything we can to just elevate the industry so again kind of like what caleb and elaine were saying i'm like looking and swiping here on my phone in my house like at all these people like uh am i supposed to be here matt johnson's here his beard is here like caleb you know it's like all these people so, <laughs> honored to be here so pumped about this yes so anyway that's me well, we do have a question from someone in the comments that did request, they are from Italy, they did request to hear your uh, rolling Italian accent. Me? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, it was like, grazie, grazie. Oh, wow. Wow. You can get a I taste know. of that in it's person good. adventure. <laughs> so, oh. And you will. Ma'am. Yes, you will. <laughs> yep. Well, for those that are just kind of tuning in and have not heard about Venture, uh, we were supposed to be having Venture Workshop this week. And today is Thursday, which would have been the final day of the four day workshop. And we were going to be planning this amazing after party, after party, uh, ceremonies, award stuff. Oh, the award ceremony. And by by the way, this time, Eric, it won't be so stressed and we will be able to have individual people giving their remarks when they accept their rewards. We're going to we'll really let it time. sink in. We'll have some more time this time. I think we, last time we were pretty rushed with our uh, award ceremony to break down in time for the next after party, but we're going to let this it one soak in this time. still hilarious and still so fun. We try to make sure that the, the awards are very um, funny for the most part or like... Um, 
you know, not so much as like who's got the best of the best and who's, you know, but more so like who has the best drone fail? Um, <laughs> and like who has, what are, what are some of the other? Comments? I mean, I feel like wedding bloopers is going to be wedding owned bloopers. by Caleb and Elaine since they set the bar oh, so is, high. Yeah. They, they just came out with a video that was a uh, bloopers for, for weddings over the past five years. And they were so funny. Oh man. Did you guys so. enjoy that editing process or how long did that take to cycle through all those moments? We were laughing for weeks. So we kind of started it before quarantine. So even the timing was perfect because by the time we were really like wrapping it up, we were like, hadn't seen our people in like three weeks. And I mean, we were just in here dying. And it's not just like, first of all, we have like the coolest couples in the world. So all of them, like when they saw it, they were, they were screaming. And also it <laughs> included some of our fails as well. Like Caleb's fall of, the great fall the great of 2018 fall. and you know, <laughs> yeah. for weeks yeah. over and so a few gimbal films love that camera rolling all over the place like we just we had a blast <laughs> It was, so it, fun. It was it's definitely so fun. awesome. Well, yeah. yeah, so we try to keep it to things like that, where it's like we spend the whole award ceremony just laughing our faces off. And Eric is obviously an incredible MC, and so he <laughs> he does like it's so much fun. So we're we're looking forward to it. But coming up on this week and thinking about how we're missing getting to hug all of you and mm. meet some of you in person for the first time and um, reunite again. It was just really kind of a hard week for us personally. And we just, um, we're grateful that everybody took some time to come hang out, talk a little bit um, and stuff like that. So I've got some really cool questions. Are you guys ready? Sure. Yeah. Let's do it. Okay. Um, so if you, how are we going to moderate this so that nobody, it's not everybody talking at once. Do you want to pick an order? Do you want to pick how a couple? How about if, if you guys, if you have a good answer, raise your hand and we'll call your name. Or you can put the, <laughs> or you can push that little reactions button and do one of these. Ah. And then it can go on there and you're like, oh, that's me. You so, can do that. Nice. You can raise your hand. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll take both. Um, the first question, is there anything that anyone has learned since the shutdown that they want to share? Oh. Who, wait, did, did Lindsay, Lindsay, we got you. Um, so something I, I didn't learn, but I was reminded of recently. Um, so I, I am one of the judges for the Love Stories TV awards as a few of us yeah. on this panel are. And I, so I was at home watching like 30 incredible wedding films and I was getting like super emotional because they were awesome videos, but also like, I was reminded of like what an amazing, incredible job like we have as wedding filmmakers. Like we get to be in the room with people's, you know, the best moments of their life, you know, people yeah. seeing their, their, you know, spouse for the first time or walking their daughter down the aisle or whatever. And I was, I was getting all choked up watching these films going, man, I want to get back out there and, and shooting mm. weddings again. It's, it was good to be kind of reminded of that. Cause I think you get caught up in like, the rat race and I want to make money and, you know, growing a business. And it's nice to be reminded once in a while, like we are some of the like most fortunate people to, to be able to do what we do. Oh, I love that so much. That's, great. that's really sweet. That's also like, what a great reminder because we truly are like, um, bridesmaids, parents, sometimes we're, they're not even in the room in moments when we're there. And, uh, it's kind of special, like, for first looks and stuff like that. So yeah, I love that. Um, I saw Sarah and Rick, did y'all have a response? Yeah, just something that personally, like we already love going this direction with our company, but something we've noticed has been really beneficial um, with all the reschedules, all the postponements, um, how important it is. And I know Matt uh, will probably chime in on this too, since he loves to talk about relational filmmaking, but um, <laughs> yeah how beneficial it is to have that kind of business where you have a relationship with your couples, where you're not a commodity. Um, and even like for us specifically, and I think a lot of people in this group are the same way, you know, we're, I guess what you call a boutique company. We do 15 to 20 weddings a year. We don't do quantity. And it's been really hard watching other people in our industry with the struggles they've had, the companies that are more quantity based, um, that are a lot lower price, more weddings, because a lot of them have stories of all their couples coming back with, here's my new date. And if you're not available, I want my money back. And just people losing weddings left and right. And 
thankfully we've you know been able to reschedule all the ones that have wanted to and they're always checking with us first um, mm -hmm. and always recognize bias and just the importance of having that relationship with your couples instead of a you know more of a commodity type business because um you know we're really thankful for how we've been able to reschedule everything and i see other people out there who man i mean this is absolutely like destroying their business for the next year or two because they had you know a hundred some odd weddings on the books so um feeling bad for the people who who are dealing with that and thankful for having that kind of relationship and just recognizing the importance of having that relationship with your couples i think it's helped a lot in this time that's great yeah 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 Aaron, what are how are you guys handling it since i know you have a little bit more of a, a team-based structure too don't you or what does that look like for you guys yeah so it's 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 been interesting for us um we've had i think we've had 15 postponements and two cancellations uh so pretty fascinating you know just like you know in a month just the whole wave hits mm. uh luckily you know our what's interesting for most of us is like I, I have four kids Joey has four kids Britain has four kids like a lot of us are just like kid city and uh keeping children alive right now is <laughs> is kind of <laughs> intimidating uh especially that many because apparently they have to eat three times a day and that's weird uh but you know like we basically have set it up where all of us can work from home um we we had enough of a backlog and and some of that was like a backlog of things we've always wanted to do so okay. you know we're working on all of our new reels and it's like divide and conquer you know it's like hey oliver like you start cutting on this hey ryan you start cutting on this tina you work on this and so we we've, we've been able to divide and conquer we had enough weddings where we're still editing um luckily we got some commercial work because of this we've done a, a few psas for for downtown Houston. So we're, we're doing a little bit of shooting, a lot of editing for those. Yeah. Um, so we've been really, we've been fortunate with our situation to be able to, you know, to really like kind of keep everyone busy. Um, and thankfully we had a structure set up where we had payroll covered for a couple of months. Um, so, you know, even though it was kind of like these weddings, they're shifting somewhere else. We know we can keep everyone on staff. We can take care of them. We can make sure that like, we're not having, cause that's the, like the last thing we'd ever want to do is, is say things are slow. We have to like, you know, cut people down. Uh, yeah. So for us, it's just a matter of like using the opportunity to get creative, challenge ourselves. Um, and honestly, like take a moment to chill. Like, like how often, like how much do we just like stay in the race and just work, 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 work. And it's great to hustle, but you know, for, for us, we're also kind of taking the moment to say like, you know, let's breathe. Like I get to sp spend a like beautiful springtime with my family for once in the last 15 yeah. years. <laughs> so like, you know, it's kind of relishing some of that, you know, where like we're, we're not feeling, you know, stress of if we're not producing something new every day, it was a failure. Um, so right now it's, it's, it's that it's getting creative. We're, we're redoing our branding, which we've been wanting to do We're we're building all new demos. We'll be backlog free this month, which will be, like that'll be sweet, even though we don't have a well, what? It's like few the best. more months. I know, so we're gonna enjoy <laughs> that and figure it out after. The, after that, it's probably a ton of passion projects, uh, <laughs> just because we've we've kind of got the funds to be able to say, all right, like what have you been wanting to do? Let's just do it. And so we'll make some short films. We'll, you know, shoot some reels, whatever it is. Like let's figure it out. Dude, that's rad. I love that. Love to hear that. Yeah. Sweet. Awesome. Does anybody else have anything they want to share that they've learned? No? All right. We can go on to the next question. Yeah, we got some questions. We have more. Uh, the next one's kind of just a goofy question. Has anybody seen, uh, I think when this all <laughs> first started happening, and you, you, it was interesting to see America um, just really cope by producing an insane amount of memes. And um, <laughs> I know for me and like the stress of it, it was definitely like a little bit helpful to like at least have something to kind of chuckle about when when I would go on the internet and feel so depressed reading all the news and things like that. So I know it was helpful for me, but has anybody had a meme that best describes their experience so far with the shutdown? Uh, Aaron? Uh, I think mine would be, there's like one that's like Macaulay Culkin 
sitting on his couch, just like, I mean, he's covered in Cheetos. <laughs> my dog. He's covered in Cheetos and like beer and ice cream everywhere. And it's just like when someone like wants to like FaceTime you, you know, for your job or something like that. You know, like, <laughs> that's me most days like, in my boxers. Just sure, I can hop on. Let's do it. <laughs> so right now you're probably in your boxers is what you're saying. Oh great. Let, let me no. What, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, dude, I Nick, you got any uh, good memes at all? Because I'm curious. Yeah, I, I saw this one and it was from um, like a, a behind the scenes shot of, from Passion of the Christ where Mel Gibson is talking to Jim Caviezel and Jim Caviezel is Jesus and he's all bloody with a crown of thorns, you know, like taking a break and uh, Mel Gibson's like really like, you know, talking to him and uh, in the meme said um, how I feel when my um, friends without children talk to me how hard this is. Yes. <laughs> Gosh. I feel like I could really relate for that one. Oh, that was a really nice touch. Did you come up with it with one? I didn't have one. You, you had one, didn't you? The other, I have that? a. Oh, sorry. I have another. Oh, I want to hear yours. Yeah, I want to hear uh, the children one. There's a viral video of this one child. He's probably like three or four, and it's called <laughs> "Have You Ever Had a Dream?" And this kid is this kid is being interviewed, and it's it's like a very '90s like star backdrop, yes. and he's like, "Have you ever had a dream where you, if you could." If you um, if you would go to you, if you if you to never, would you go to? Would you? And so he just keeps going and going and going, and, and he just can't spit it out. And at the end, he goes, "He could do so much, he could do anything." And he, and it's like the funniest video ever. But the meme was like this guy, and it, it's that audio, and it's every scene in his house. This kid facing with his head back to the camera, oh, and it's just going, and he's just like. <laughs> and that's been me for the past five days. My my five year old is literally doing that to me. He's talking about this video game, and he wants me to watch him play it every day. He's like, Dad, you need a game where I could just go and I jump to the next level, and I'm, and the whole time I'm like, so. <laughs> We, our, our daughter definitely communicates to us that way. Have you, have you, have it? And it is so fun. I like, I always think of that meme too, because oh. like, I have tears in my eyes from laughing because that meme like makes me laugh so much. But yeah, yeah. that's very real. Does any uh, parents want to uh, let us? Yeah, I haven't said my name a... yet. Oh, your meme, sorry. Mine was one where Ben Wyatt's holding out the Dolgana coffee and saying, would a depressed person make this? <laughs> <laughs> and that just feels very relevant to me because I feel like initially I like sunk kind of I got kind of depressed at the very beginning of it like we're both pretty extroverted people and things are getting like it's just kind of hard when you're when like your life just shifts that dramatically and uh so I was like getting kind of depressed and like finding the weirdest outlets you know um but yeah I've gotten pretty good at making that coffee so anyway okay uh our next question though going from the parent thing um I know not everybody is a parent here so we can but I know a lot of our listeners are so I wanted to ask this but parents how are you managing your work and parenting are we the only ones that are drowning in my little pony and the constant <laughs> phrase want to play with me oh my gosh. <laughs> David how about you guys what are y'all looking like dynamically <laughs> yeah. Armin showed me this meme today and it was like I'm more scared of having my child home for two months than the virus is still and it like <laughs> <laughs> so hard <laughs> I've never been so grateful for Disney Plus in my entire life. Like that I was, was great like, timing. Oh, I'm excited for Disney Plus, like all the classic cool, then the virus hit, and then Frozen 2 was just life for us. Uh, yeah. <laughs> just nuts. Dude, I hear ya. It's yeah. one, it's definitely one of those things where you're like, it's not that we don't like our, our kids or anything like that. <laughs> it's like it's just that they're, they're, you feel bad when there's like a, a tiny human that's like, they deserve to play and they deserve to have fun. And you, you also you can't do both at the same time. And it was, that was really hard for us at like, especially in the beginning when we still had a lot of deadlines with stuff that we were working on and stuff. So. Yeah. Cause I feel like we've been working at, I see everybody, man, I'm just taking this time and I'm revamping my brand. I'm launching demo reels. And I'm like, I'm working at less than 50% capacity Last. trying to keep up. Yeah. We're, like, and, well, uh, well, just... <laughs> yeah, we're like, how can we make this a positive? Well, it's like, well, we haven't potty trained. So I guess quarantine <laughs> is like, that's our accomplishment. Like, yeah, we have <laughs> haven't gotten done, but she can poop in the toilet. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Success. 
I, I will say for, for us, like 14 month old daughter and normally our wedding films are very music driven. So we're always like looking for really cool music, really cool bands, looking at a variety of stuff. Rachel's listening to music all the time. And it has been pretty much exclusively the Moana and Frozen 2 soundtrack just playing every day. <laughs> And like, I'll find myself humming it. I'll just be like, eh, eh, eh. And I'm like, oh no, what am I doing? And Rachel be like, you humming that again? I'm like, I guess so. <laughs> and so it, like, I have, I'm, I'm very nervous about like the edits that we're putting out now. Cause I'm like, how, how focused is this going to be? Like how, how subliminally am I going to be affected by those songs and is that going to make the, my films different i don't know i just imagine you in a film coming out with lost in the woods as the background song <laughs> lost in the woods <laughs> a beard just uh, appears my true north oh my gosh oh man uh, i hope not <laughs> i wanted to ask you john um what's life look like you you've got what three kids or just two yeah just two, just two? Um, okay one one is nine one is three and so okay I moved my office back to my house. I have a, an office I, that's like three miles from my house. And I, I moved back home for like a week and a half, two weeks <laughs> and used the playroom as my studio. And it was, it was the worst. It was the worst thing ever. And so like, I'd be in the middle, like we were recording with chapters and like my daughter came in, you know, it's like with no diaper on just, but you know, but I was like, Hey, you gotta get out of here. You can't be on the podcast. So that was weird, um, but luckily, um, where my office is, no one's there. I can drive. You know, like I was able to drive from my garage to the front door of my office, and kind of like it's like an extra bedroom in my house almost. So that was good. But yeah, we've Disney Plus it up. We've watched, you know, the Frozen two lots of times. I've been Prince Eric for the last couple of days. I think is who I've been. Either that Prince or, Eric. Caleb yeah. has to be the horse. You know the horse okay. from Frozen yeah. Two. I'm just yeah. the horse. I'm just. <laughs> I'm, and like, use I'm the water I'm, nook. <laughs> I'm yeah, I'm I'm a uh, Kristoff a lot, but Prince Eric, which is the aerial movie, which I respect, you know. So you know, just doing that dad life, uh, and yeah. kind of all caught up on edits and everything. So like, just working on some projects that will be out soon. So, John, I, I thought you were gonna say that you had like a mobile office or something like that, because <laughs> every like two minutes you disappear and then you're in a different room or a different <laughs> angle. This is interesting. Yes, like, disconnects and reconnects. It's like here's me, me by the bed. No, I'm outdoors. <laughs> Who knows where I'll be next? I'm like, it's none of your business what I'm doing right now. No, I, I'm trying to find He's playing I'm, hide and I'm seek. Like, I'm in a blanket outside of my back patio. <laughs> this is where I've landed. It's like my bed. I can't. My arm hurts. I uh, my wife has an appointment. She's going to in like 15 minutes. So I had to come home and like, like go away, kids, go away. I'll find a spot that's quiet. And then the wind picked up, and I was like, no, I'm cold. So. That's what I'm doing, Matt. Thanks for bringing that up. Oh my god, I love it, I love it so much. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> All right, do we have any questions from the day that we would? Have had? Uh, let me see. I'll go through that. You ask uh, one of those questions, and I'll get some of these ready for some people. Yeah. Um, our next question is: uh, What are what are you all looking forward to the most for Venture 2020, aside from the hugs? If you're a hugger, um, do you guys? Do, who wants to Who wants to start on this one? I'm excited to put things in Eric Floberg's mouth. That's, <laughs> is that same, same. So we all are very excited. Hi. Can't wait. <laughs> oh gosh. All right, um, Penn. Yeah, you know we've been around a long time. It seems like I was going through some, a closet today and pulled out uh, a notepad that was full, legal pad, full of stuff from Weva 2000. BC or something. I don't know what it was. It was a long time ago of, of the very first wedding um, um, conference. conference that we went to and on my notes and how to, you know, improve your business and how to do all that kind of stuff. And I was just like, wow, this really takes me back. And then I started thinking about in focus. And then I started thinking about all the other conferences that we've done. And I just excited to see what venture is all about. You know, you hear so many great things and I just want to experience, you know, Colorado, you know, not that I've never been, but you know, just, just something different. You know, just something different, and see what everything's all about. And, and of course, you know, meet the new people that I've never met, and give you all hugs and all that kind of stuff. But just we've heard 
we've heard great things about Wedding Film Retreat too. So that's why we have always wanted to have you both uh, be a part of this too. So we're glad that it was um, working out this year that you're able to join. So we're really excited to have you all here, seriously. We're pretty, we're pretty excited as well. And, and a little depressed that we you know we haven't experienced it yet. You know, like, it, like you said. <laughs> it's I, just got a waiting period. I, Can I, I admit it's, that it's we wanted to... Can I admit that we were intimidated to invite you guys? <laughs> Stop. Yeah, no, seriously. Stop. We were like, oh. <sighs> yeah, I was well, like typing here. really slowly. And now you're like, like, we're the homebody crazy cat lady. You're like, oh my gosh, why were we intimidated by them? Yeah, the whole thing is. It's so I can do something cool like Kaylin has with his hair at some point. Well, you've got the hair already. I feel like you've earned my respect. I mean, I'm I'm there, so. I <laughs> to just let me buzz the sides, and then we can <laughs> crazy with the yeah. Do somebody, a mohawk. Yeah, maybe that might be that might happen, but I don't let her even do my laundry, so I'm not going to let her cut my hair. <laughs> Caitlin shouldn't let me do his laundry. Oh, yeah. I've shrunk a couple things recently. It's really bad. <laughs> it's really a tough, tough topic um, around the house. <laughs> yeah, let's not go there. Uh, <laughs> but we, um, yeah. What else? Who else? What else is everybody excited about? I'm just, I'm just stoked to like see everybody. I'm, I'm like yeah. seeing anyone in a couple months, and just the fact that in a few months we're all going to be together and hanging out. I mean, that's. The best thing about venture kind of those in between times where people are just coming up to you and you're able to like talk to other wedding filmmakers and be like oh i'm not the only one who like is in this thing so that's that's what i'm just stoked on in the award ceremony and I mean, when i think back on the ghost ranch venture that lip sync lip sync battle was pretty awesome. oh so like another thing oh. like that that would be that'd be amazing oh my gosh that bring was some so of that back fun or something. that was uh that was priceless. I feel that, I mean, there were some moments that Levi really messed up for my performance, but we'll forgive <laughs> him on that moment. Kaylin's song got cut short. I was in, in the middle of Sweet Beyond. I mean, how do you cut that short? No. It was pretty funny. You don't. So, but you don't. That, I, like you said, David, I think the biggest thing is those in between moments. I mean, we all have, uh, you know, available resources for people to learn, but I think the community aspect of venture is what's so important. Whenever we were considering, you know, do we postpone, do we do a virtual version? It's like, just virtual is not going to cut it. It's not going to be the same experience and it's not going to be worth it. So I think obviously the thing I'm looking forward to is once we all get there, I want to have like the largest group hug ever, you know, <laughs> I uh, just can't wait to hang with everybody. Oh yeah. <laughs> the in, but the in-between moments, getting to hang out and chat even over like, dinner or lunches in the morning over coffee um playing with gear just connecting with people because we're gonna have great you know moments where people can learn but i think like you said mm -hmm. those in-between moments is where you get to meet your future second shooters you get to meet uh, team members that you get to uh hang out with and be best friends with and oh i didn't know you're from the same city i am it's just a really or good the experience next venture teachers um yeah. both nick miller and caleb Lane attended venture um before and well we knew we knew caleb and elaine a lot longer before this and then so. we just upgraded so, eric, we just upgraded <laughs> eric. Um, i i was going through the photos when i was posting on the facebook groups and um just going through my phone photos and looking at all the, the venture stuff and there was a, a phone photo moment that i took where I, it was like the first moment i looked around venture and everybody was just it was right before everything started so it was the morning everybody's getting coffee and um at the little coffee cart and um i looked around and realized how many women were there i think what uh, what was the percentage it was between like, it was like 30, 30 to honestly. 50 or somewhere in between there of like women at the last venture and it was the first moment i was thinking like whoa there's a lot of women here in like an industry where typically like you go to these events and there's there's like more a lot more um, men and I took a photo of it, but it was definitely like an in-between moment when and I was just looking around and at this photo this morning and how everybody was just sitting and talking with each other. There wasn't a single person who was just standing there awkwardly, at least on the photo. I'm sure that that happened many a times to a lot of people because that's just normal. But um, but everybody in this photo was like talking and and like connecting right before and it was it was like such a special moment to me and I was like reminiscing on that photo. So that's a huge moment for me is those in-between moments because they're so special and everybody's what, always talking and hanging out. What about, what about men with women's names? Gonna... <laughs> <laughs> okay. We'll try to, we'll try to get a percentage for you. Okay. Thank you. If we could get that stat, I'd appreciate it. <clears throat> thank you. Love it. That's um, so funny. Who else? 
I know uh, Nick's excited for the mug, so that's a good plus, I think. <laughs> yeah, that's that's really the only reason why I'm coming. It's the mug. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we can get you a hoodie this time or something. We'll just... <laughs> oh, something special just for me. No, I, doing, I, I think can... we're doing SAG this year. Yeah, no, I, I'm really excited. One of the things that um, I know other people have touched on this is just the relationships that you've built, you know, and, and you don't know what's going to come for it. Like that first venture, Jay and Mac were there and Becca Neblock was there. And from those relationships that we built with them, you know, we like started referring each other. And we actually got a few weddings out in one in California, one in Washington because of Jay and Mac, and because of Becca. And you don't like that's mm-hmm. the kind of stuff that I think that. Um, people might not realize like how it's going to help their business is, you know, later on down the line, whenever, like you were saying, Christine earlier about, you know, or Kaylin, you know, about uh, second shooters or team members or whatever, you know, like just that side of things is like that al- alone is almost worth, you know, the admission to go is just learning and, and connecting with other people. I love that. Especially right now, you know, we're, we're going to be trading weddings probably, you know, as this thing keeps going on. So you're going to need those people that you can rely on. So definitely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I know Texas is opening up, but the rest of us aren't quite <laughs> really there yet. So, um, yeah. So we, yeah. Who knows how long some of these, some of our weddings, like in August, August, I think is the latest one we've had that's gotten uh, rescheduled, but who knows how long and Luckily, all of them have been, you know, same same with you guys, Sarah and Rick, where all of our couples have been like, okay, here's three date options we're looking at next year. We haven't rescheduled yet, but like, what do you think about it? And are you available? And we write in those first conversations, which is really, really awesome. But um, I know a lot of people, like, sometimes they just don't have that luxury or they decide rather than rescheduling, they're just going to do it in their parents' living rooms. Is there is there someone who could come out? you know, and travel out and stuff like that. I'm sure that that kind of stuff is happening on a regular basis. And so. Um, Aaron, you mentioned, what was the latest month this year that you had someone either cancel or postpone? Uh, I think we've had up to August reschedule. Um, And cancellations were, one was May and one is July. Um, And yeah, but we're getting, we're starting. Like we've had a few people inquire about, postponing like 2021 dates and we're just like "Eh, i don't think so so uh wow it's been an interesting interesting yeah yeah i'll I'll just say on the opposite side of things though we've had uh i think it was three days ago now three or four days ago they said texas can have weddings now and then i think with in less than 24 hours we had an email from somebody like hey are you available in july and i'm like (laughs) uh i'm kind of scared <laughs> right now i i don't feel comfortable for a july wedding uh. yeah that, that's been the interesting dynamic too is like we i think we've booked five weddings since mid-march so like even though all of this was going on like you're still getting people that are just like i'm planning my wedding <laughs> you know, like, yeah they have, had- they have more time than ever to like watch our watch our films and like they're like i got nothing <laughs> yeah. else to do let's book these guys yeah it's true. Yeah, has that, has every anybody else gotten a booking since all of this started? We've had three. Same. Yeah, cool. it's great. Still, still some stuff coming through. Even one great. for 2020, which I was shocked about. I think it's like late September, September. but yeah, people are still planning. Yeah, we ours have been September and November of this year of new couples. We put a big hold on everything for a little bit there while we were like just no new new couples. We need to get our rescheduling sorted. And then, um, which I think was pretty standard for most people. And then we just lifted that like a month ago, not a month ago, a couple of weeks, two weeks ago. I don't know what time, who knows what time is right now. Until everybody's finalized for this year. Yeah. Yeah. And once things started settling, we were like, okay, new booking. So now we have three. Yep. Um, can I, uh, I do have another question or do you actually, let's ask from the, from the group here. Um, someone mentioned, um, Oh, well, this, I think we can all answer this. It started three years ago. We were doing good locally and low budget market. I want to make better videos. I have no studies or training other than YouTube and a premier course. What should be my next step? 
And I feel like venture would be a great step because you're going to get everything you need. And I think the biggest thing is building the community around you that can help support your, uh, your vision and also encourage you. But you're going to see so many different ways of, of pricing, of filming, of gear. Like you will have an objective option to really make your best decision because you're going to see such great ways and you can ask questions, you know, Hey, why does my profile look weird? And we can stand there right next to you and help you get that working out. So, I mean, I feel like that for the bang of your buck, I mean, I feel like that's the best way is to, is to connect with other filmmakers. And, um, I mean, in-person education, I think is, uh, a very unique aspect right now, considering a lot of people are just online right now. So I think it's going to have a, a, a unique touch to it. I think coming this fall for sure. Um, we had another one. Someone said, and um, are any of you altering pricing or structure to be able to still book some weddings in order to keep some cash flow for your businesses? Or I'll add to that, or are you finding other ways to make money instead of filming weddings? And other ways in terms of a lot of it's things we've been meaning to do for a while, like um, get some of our more generic footage on like a stock footage website um mm. we um so both of us have a background in news but like rick actually has that voice he has like the news <laughs> hello everyone <laughs> yeah how are you <laughs> <laughs> forever we want to get him doing like sober work and just have him bothered to like make the account get him set up so we're like yeah what things can we do from home without even going out and shooting anything else that'll help mm. maybe you know fill in some gaps I'll have Rick voice over one of my wedding films. I'll do it. That sounds great. <laughs> I will do that. <laughs> it's like a it's like a package upgrade for your couples. <laughs> I can speak um, to that a little bit. We haven't adjusted our pricing, but I definitely similar to what Sarah was saying, is just finding other ways to bring in income. And I know that last year um for a long time you're we really against uh offering raw footage or any type of form of that <laughs> and then after a really personal experience that we had um, we were like yo this is this is of great value to our couple so we started offering kind of our version of what we would want raw footage to look and feel like and just since quarantine we've seen couples as far as you know four or five years ago that we filmed their weddings come back and grab wow. that footage so wow. finding other ways to serve the people that you are already around you and are already connected to you and um, finding income that way. I love that. I've heard about your, your, uh, the way that you offer it, what you call the legacy. Can you explain that yeah, real quick just a little bit it? for people that don't know? Yeah. So part of the reason why we never offered raw footage is just that I felt like it was unwatchable. It's like some of it's like a little embarrassing. I'm like walking around with my camera and it's on and I don't know it. Like, <laughs> I don't want to offer that to a, a client. And so we kind of just started brainstorming, okay, how do we offer it to our people in a way that's watchable, uh, where they'd want to watch it? And, uh, and we actually, we had some, so we got some footage from Elaine's dad back in like the 60s and 70s on a Super 8 camera. And so whenever we got it developed, whenever it came back to us, it came in one timeline, like just one file. And we were just watching it back to back to back and it had no audio, but it was crazy that we were like sitting in the living room with all of the family and we we're just watching it. It was this. like a time capsule. I was like, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. And that's really where the idea sparked. Like this junk isn't edited. It's like the back of my grandfather's head that, you know, <laughs> he passed when he was five years old, but it was extremely valuable to me. And so as a videographer, yeah. I was like, wow, like here we are, we have hours of footage that our people don't see. And although I don't see the value in it, like they definitely will. And so we started offering that and <laughs> that has floated like from the beginning of the year like that income has been like whoa yeah. i wasn't expecting it to be but people jumped on it so yeah. that's just a small example i think that's awesome something else, Anyone else? a lot of people doing um that we still like we have so many things on our we want to do this list that we haven't <laughs> um but we have a lot of couples who we shot their wedding films in HD, but we weren't like, we were still doing DVDs. And we were saying we need to go back through years worth of hard drives. Um, Cause if they didn't get a Blu-ray, they were 
getting SD. And we're like, go through all these that were shot in HD um, and offer for, you know, I've heard people doing it from anywhere for a hundred bucks to 300 bucks or more to say, you know, digital files, like of your, all your wedding files, but digital HD instead of, you know, the DVD that you got eight years ago. Mm. Um, Cause we were shooting HD cool. in 2010, but I don't remember when we went more to like USB and digital delivery kind of stuff. So going back, if you have all those old files, um, you know, upgrades to even to past clients. Kind of like the wrong so smart. We have it in our contract that we were only like held liable to hold the footage a year after the We've changed it. It's like two weeks after delivery, but we'll hold it. But but we'll <laughs> hold it. And I'm not joking, we still have every like everything from like every wedding almost, right? Oh, yeah, pretty For, much. For like all, we, we're like, we just want to make sure it's, we're like protected in case something were to ever happen. But right now we still have everything. And I feel like that's something valuable that people should remember because you can always, always like, you know, communicate with them later, five years later and say, hey, like I, I have this rough footage. Are you sure you don't want it? And you know, it's just, it's smart. It's the smartest thing to do. So, um, Eric, what are you doing? Are you just, just doing YouTube pretty much during this, uh, downtime without filming yeah. weddings or. Yeah. Uh, YouTube has become a big part of my career now, uh, providing content, educational content, entertaining stuff. And I recently launched uh, a Patreon as well, where people can jump on monthly to get more educational content. So just kind of strategizing how between, YouTube ad revenue and all the affiliate sales I can make there, as well as getting more people to join the Patreon to learn more there. It's it's just a really approachable price. It's just $10 a month. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that's not applicable to everyone. And so I actually yesterday just released a Patreon video, which I can give a sneak, <laughs> like what my strategy is for this year. And I am one of those people that is willing to lower prices to get work. And I know a lot of people will criticize me for having that stance because they feel like it devalues uh, the market. And but I, the caveat I have with that during this time is that everything that I'm approaching uh, with negotiating rates this year uh, is going to be with a caveat that, hey, we are in a year of just totally unprecedented times like the, we, we are out of our work. And so this year we are going to I am going to negotiate my rates with whoever I'm going to be working with. You do not, you should not expect this in the future, but this is how it's going to be this year. So I can survive and I can put food on the table for my kids and all that good stuff. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm going to be strategizing. I do photography and film. So just strategizing for old clients from years past saying, hey, I normally charge 500 for this, for this session, um, but would you be interested in whatever your budget is? Let's find a date and just make it happen. And that could be a short film for a family. I just did, um, a session with a couple that's engaged. They wanted to tell their story or they, you know, they from high school till now, 10 years, like ran around the city. We went to all their spots um, and I made a film for them. Just getting creative about that kind of stuff. Not being afraid to reach out to people, you know, friends, uh, family members, people want to support people right now. Uh, so if they still have a salary paying job and they want to support you and you have something to offer them, go after it, go find them. Uh, and don't be afraid to try to negotiate those prices to get cash in the bank right now so that when you're doing double the amount of work in 2021 with rescheduling and what you're booking for 2021, <laughs> now you have a robust portfolio of other things that you've already done too, and you can apply it to the future as well. Um, there's just all sorts of opportunities that you can be doing right now. If you've always wanted to start a YouTube channel, it's a great time to try to start doing that. <laughs> like you feel like you can get enough traction and start making money that way. Um, Honestly, world's our oyster right now. And I know that's a really optimistic viewpoint from a very pessimistic world and situation. Mm -hmm. um, but there's just so many things that you could do. You'd be surprised if you just reached out. And so, yeah. Um, Eric, I want to thank you for, for saying that. Cause it's, um, I do think that it's there, there's a lot of like miss or like mixed information. A lot of people saying, don't lower your prices. Don't lower the standard. And some people are saying, but I need to provide for my family, but we don't have, we don't know how we're going to make our, our next rent, um, and things like that. And I, and I do think it's important to say like, you know what, you, you got to figure out what's best for your family and also kind of look at the world kind of creatively and, um, how to bring in money. Uh, can I just mention that you have a really, really helpful um, YouTube video 
Um, if you haven't seen Eric's YouTube video about like how he makes extra passive income and things like that, like I know you have a lot of creative ways. And even if you don't go strictly with exactly what Eric does, because I, I know you do a lot of photography and stuff like that and you mentioned in there, you still have a lot of um, creative ways of approaching it on there, especially through like um, YouTube and things like that. And so I just want to make a shout out to that because I think it's really great. And I think um, it's important to be encouraging like creative outlets for income right now because I, I know that's really helpful for people. Sarah, I cut you off. What were you saying? Sorry. You're fine. Just along the thing of not being afraid to reach out to certain people to try certain things. Um, and in terms of uh, negotiating pricing, people lowering pricing to get jobs, everyone has to do what you have to do, you know, for your family to put food on the table. Um, mm -hmm. But I do want to add to that because of everything that's going on, don't, if you need to like negotiate or you want to change your prices, don't just do it out of fear. Don't let it just be a fear reaction to what's happening in the world. Cause we actually did a really substantial price increase like in February, I think. Um, and then all this happened and we're like, okay, do we really want to stick to this? Like, yeah, that's pretty <laughs> really a smart thing to do and we've since booked four i think four weddings at our new starting price and <laughs> awesome so, like, like if you you know if you're in that point where you know you need to negotiate on something yeah by all means do it do whatever you have to do to pay your bills and put food on the table but don't i would just tell people don't let it be like an instant fear reaction think about it think about your needs your specific needs, but don't do it just out of fear. Because um, people are still willing to plan their wedding and pay for what they want. Um, it's pretty amazing. Awesome. I love that. Aaron, you. what'd you say? Yeah, I, I was going to add to that. Um, same exact situation. In February, we raised our base packages by $2,000. And then this all hit and it was like, okay, what do we do? Do we do we like stick to the guns? Do we pull back? You know, maybe no one's seen the pricing. Uh, <laughs> and and yeah, we've we've booked those like four or five weddings in that time span on that new pricing. Um, and so like that's been a huge bump for us as weddings like final balances are moving to next year that would have come in this year. We have like bigger retainers that are coming in now because of that. So it's kind of offsetting that impact. Mm, um, yeah. And and I'd say like a a real strong opinion I've I've had through this is that like right now more than ever our value is like through the roof uh and and that's because people can't be together and people can't like we're, we're experiencing it right now like video <laughs> and connection is like so important right now so you know for these weddings that are going to be stripped down and intimate and their family can't travel in like what we deliver is more important than it's ever been uh people who are like you know they have, they have family who are at risk or elderly or whatever like that like they talk about that raw footage you know all that like those like heirlooms, those are like so important right now to people. So uh, yeah. I do think as long as you're just, you know, totally do what's best for you. Like I have no issue with someone saying like, I had to like cut my prices or negotiate. Like I, I think it's, it's a negative on the industry for someone to degrade someone for doing that. Like you have to know you, what you're comfortable mm -hmm. with. You have to know uh, also who your market is like different markets that, that kind of like middle market, like that's going to feel a lot of squeeze right now. Whereas like, high-end market might feel like almost like more of an influx of spending because people who have money are like valuing something a little more right now. Uh, mm -hmm. So I think, I think as long as that's your, you know, your rationale, like you, you go with it and like stick to your guns. Uh, beyond that for us, like generating extra money has been uh, some commercial things like small businesses, churches, like they're needing to communicate more than ever. So in the same regard, like, you know, start reaching out. Like, so if you if you have the time and the capacity, reach out to people. Figure out whether it's like live stream or producing like really simple content. You can start generating like some pretty easy income with really simple simple uh, projects like that, uh, just by making those connections and reaching out to people. That's great. I love that. Uh -huh. David, how about you? What are you guys doing? Yeah, we're we're kind of in an interesting place, kind of like with Eric, where we're you know, transitioning to more educational side of things. So that's been kind of cool is to use this kind of downtime to work on YouTube stuff and kind of new products and courses. But at the same time, it's also like opened up our hearts to be like, oh my gosh, you know, this if this happened when we were in the first year or two of our business, like I would be flipping out. Like we had no money. Like first year or two, I remember eating our dinner off of our Pelican case because we had no table, no anything. We just had cameras. <laughs> and so it was ridiculous. And uh, yeah, like 
I just have huge compassion because I feel like it's so easy for like some of us who are more established to kind of be like, oh, like we'll get through it. We kind of have savings. We kind of, you know, we, we've been at this, but we have the, you know, we have the experience of being in this for five or six years, but I've just totally. seen so many people that I've coached and re reached out to. I'm like, man, this is hard. And so I think one of the things I've been telling people is, hey, as you're booking weddings, like people are booking weddings, like all of us can kind of attest that people are valuing our services more now than ever. But one of the things that I've been noticing is the people that are booking the weddings are people that can really demonstrate to couples that they really like care about them. And I, I know that's kind of like, oh, well, how do I show that I care? Like, this is just something I change in my heart. But I think really what I'm seeing is the people that are willing to drop everything and talk with a potential bride, either on Zoom or on the phone, because people are so hungry for human connection. They're trapped in their house. They just have the constant 24 seven drip of the news and they're scared, but mm -hmm. they're, 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 they're going out and they're saying, hey, I want to plan my wedding. And, and it's kind of just a personal belief of mine, but I've kind of seen it when, when they just get pricing from like all these vendors, that's like the last thing they kind of want at that moment is to just like have pricing. But if the first thing you say is like, hey, let's not talk about pricing. I just want to, it's a, it's a crazy time. You know, maybe we don't normally get on the phone with everyone, but I really value you as a person. I just kind of want to know like, how are you navigating this? How are you doing? And just to stay on the phone with someone for an hour, that trust that you're going to build <laughs> is going to be insane. And so I've been telling mm -hmm. other filmmakers yeah. like, hey, if you're starting out, do a phone call with every inquiry. Like you have nothing to lose. Just be there for them. And more than likely, they're going to book your higher package because they're like, oh my gosh, this person cares. And in this time of uncertainty, every vendor that I hire, I want to be able to rely on them, not just two months from now, but a year from now. And so that's yeah. kind of, I feel like that's what I'm kind of sensing in brides is they have the money and they see the value more than ever, but they want to know that you're like there for them because they see all their friends who vendors who maybe they just didn't really know. And now they're canceling and having all these weird contract things because they didn't really like vet these people. The brides going into late 2020 and 2021 are really going to want to like know that you're there for them. So that's, that's kind of what I've, I've been telling people and I've seen people who have done that, like their bookings have just gone really really well so that's kind of what i'm saying and then we're also like focusing on education on our side yeah can i just make a shout out to you david there was one day i spent an entire day pretty much crying about all of the stuff that was going on news that i have from friends who contracted it whatever the virus and stuff like that i spent this, this day and kaylin came to me and was like you won't believe what david and harmony just did they like they like set up this google doc form for filmmakers can i can i like share this publicly is that totally fine yeah, yeah, yeah. that you have this that you have this set up um it's on um for anyone who's curious it's on david and harmony's uh instagram Instagram's there's a highlight slash uh, forestry films forestry films and there's a highlight tab and it will direct you to a, a, a doc like a google doc where people can list their needs and then people can, uh, you can also go on there and like pay towards someone's needs and it's all filmmakers, correct? Yeah. I'll, Do you want to talk a little yeah. bit about that? It took yeah. me about three weeks before I could emotionally handle going to look at those. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I can't do that today. And then and I was like, but let's look at this later. And then we finally were able to look at like three weeks later. It's not crazy, but yeah, talk it about was, it. I'm here about it. It's crazy. We, um, I follow this, this Christian guy, Jeff Beth, Beth K, I think. Uh, is his name and he kind of did something similar where he made a google doc and he just had everyone like everyone on his page just list needs and i was like oh that's that's a really cool idea and just seeing like how hard the wedding industry's been hit like i feel like in the first week we we're getting all these messages like what do we do what do we do and i'm like well he's doing it for just people at large like what if we did it for people in the wedding industry and i was i was really nervous to do it because i'm like are people even going to do this is it because it would be really hard for me as a person to go on a Google Doc where tons of people could see and then put in my need and my Venmo. And I feel like that'd be a really like humbling and scary experience. So I just put it out on our Instagram said, hey, I made this Google sheet. You put your name, you put like kind of a summary of your need and then your Venmo. And I'm gonna try to like get a bunch of people in the wedding industry to share this. And hopefully there'll be people that come on, put their needs, but there'll also be other wedding filmmakers who you know, have 20 bucks, a hundred bucks to spare or something like that, that could just help 
other wedding filmmakers because I know for us in the first two years of starting out, like if this happened, we'd be back in with my parents. Like no, no question. Like we we're living pretty much paycheck to paycheck. So like we, we would need help like this. And it was crazy. Like in the first couple hours, it was kind of crickets. And then all of a sudden, all these needs started pouring in. And I was, I was like overwhelmed and kind of like with you, Christy, I was like, how do, <laughs> what, what, this is crazy. This is like so it's many- emotional to read. Yeah. Some of them were like intense. Like, Hey, I just, lost my job and I'm a single dad and my computer just crashed and then I walked outside and my car engine just failed and now overnight I have like seven thousand dollars of expenses and it's just like what and that was like one and there's like so many and we're just this is crazy and for a while there was kind of crickets but then all of a sudden other filmmakers started coming in and like helping each other and that was just mind-blowing where you would there's like a comment section on the right where you could say, hey, I contributed $15 or whatever and make a little comment and people were like doing it. And I was like, this is, this is nuts. So I was, I was just really proud of our industry since I know uh, no one has not been affected by this, even if you have like mm-hmm. a lot of bookings and you're more of a higher end tier, like it's still hard. Like you're like, this mm-hmm. is so hard, but to see people helping each other out was awesome. And it's still up on our Instagram page. So if you want to go there, yeah. Yeah. Get your need or help someone else, that would be really awesome. Thank you for doing that. Like on behalf of the industry and everything, I think that that's really beautiful. Um, we had, uh, we have like a little chat section on the side and Nick Miller and Lindsay had to leave. Who else? And, and, and Levi. So, Levi yeah. had to leave as well. So they just said goodbye there, but, um, no, we're wrapping up. did you want to ask? Yeah, us? we're wrapping up. Uh, do we have anybody else who wanted to like add to that? I don't want to cut anybody off. No, good. We have one more question. Um, and then we'll be we'll be wrapped up with all of this. For any teacher that has already been to venture, uh, what's your favorite venture memory or your favorite takeaway moment from past <laughs> ventures? So I know that this doesn't apply to everybody, but um, but Caleb and Elaine, do you guys want to start? <laughs> Throw them on the spot. <laughs> I guess I'll start. I think, and I maybe I can speak for both of us. Um, we attended the venture in New Mexico, so it, it wasn't the last one, but the one before that. Um, And I think the thing that stood out to me, we've always been just, or maybe it's me, I've always been like just super scared and timid to share my work. And so Venture was really the first place where (laughs) other filmmakers, other wedding, wedding filmmakers watched our work. And it was like, you want to talk about anxiety? Like I was super stressed out, like the first couple of days there. But the amazing thing about it, it was just the most like supportive and encouraging and uplifting community I've ever been in. And like both Caleb and I have been in like kind of the arts and production industry like for year, over a decade, maybe even two at this point. And so to be in a community like that was just incredible. And till this day, I mean, Venture in New Mexico was a year and a half ago, when was it? Two years uh, ago? Two years yeah. ago? Two years? November will be two years, yeah. November yeah. will be two years. Since then, and this is not an exaggeration, every day we have some kind of communication with at least one filmmaker from that retreat. Yeah. Every wow. day. And like, um, I forget who was saying it, like we've exchanged leads, like we send, you know, uh, bookings to other videographers in the area or if there's like a destination wedding that you know we can't travel out to it's like hey I know a local person who's the bomb let's send <laughs> here contact and so it's just the community was just incredible um priceless honestly you can't put a price on that mm-hmm. wait that was amazing I didn't realize that you hadn't really shown your work publicly because yours got like vi- basically what happened for phone. everyone who doesn't know it's um we had done like a couple of styled shoots and then the next morning Elaine comes in and is like, guys, look at this. I just got too excited. I wanted to, and everybody was just like, we're playing that for everybody. Like everyone's going to watch it. Put it up on the projector in front of everybody. Yeah. I don't even know if you had like, like the option to say yes or no. (laughs) (laughs) My heart is is pounding even thinking about that moment again. Like I was (laughs) honestly, and Caleb, Caleb's between the two of us, you can't tell. He's like the chill and that's not me. Like my heart is just like, even now thinking back to that, I was so scared. But, um, I can't believe you were so scared. That blows my mind because it was so beautiful. And it was everybody, it was so like, like it felt so effortless and like of, like natural to be part of everything. I mean, 
right? Yeah. 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 Um, I was curious, uh, John, what were your thoughts coming in? Because I feel like you've talked to almost every single filmmaker that <laughs> it's possible at this your, point. Your favorite memory? Is what that was your experience your, for that memory? Well, besides, it's, yeah, besides dropping it low with Christine to some Cardi B, of course. <laughs> that was life changing. <laughs> Um, I was very you know, shocked to ask you know on that song, by the way. I just have to mention it. <laughs> I can drop it low, and I did, and I will again. It will happen. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, man, I went out there, you know, obviously our podcast was pretty new at that point and just was just there to be there, host a podcast. And like, I remember walking in, and my friend Matt Johnson was filming me walk in gave me a big hug, welcomed me. And all these people that I look at as like celebrities in the industry that I've always looked up to and, you know, just like welcomed me and called me family from the moment I walked in. And like, um, yeah, I mean, the, have people said like the in-between moments and stuff, but like I went and grabbed coffee with certain people. We went to dinner with different people certain nights and just like got to hang out with, you know, different filmmakers from different places all over the world. And like those connections that you make, you know, it's so many guests from you know that we had on the podcast in the last year came from the relationships there and you know everybody that's on here has been on our podcast and like so um it's just been one of those deals where it's it, it really you can only do so much virtually you know you can only connect so well and so you know being there and like just the cool mornings in denver and the snow came down one day and like the coffee <laughs> carts and the smells and watching eric bloberg do flips and like you know oh, and, wearing, and failing on the flips yeah, <laughs> and matt johnson wearing else. bacon shirts and i don't oh, know it's just like there were so many things it's hard to put you know and then getting to host the podcast with everybody that was there and all the speakers mm -hmm. and like that that moment for me obviously has to kind of be up there at the top of like did that really happen i think it did mm -hmm. so it was oh. overall and then how small you guys make the different class settings like you know, it didn't feel like this huge conference. Like we just got back from WPPI in Vegas and it's like, you kind of see people and it's great. You know, there's a big show and stuff, but like the intimate, like just being able to say, Hey, real quick, Kaylin, what was that you just said? What was the question? And like that kind of interaction with people and um, everybody is just so cool there. Like the vibe of everybody there is so cool and so relatable. So I don't know if that answered the question. That, that's, that's my thoughts. <laughs> Much love. Thank man. you. Yeah. That's so sweet. Yeah. Oh, um, Matt, Matt Johnson. Matt, you got, you have to have some experiences, bro. Oh my God. Well, how about, how about yeah. that? How about that drone excursion? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, I'm sad. I'll say ghost ranch drone excursion was great. Um, the Colorado <laughs> drone excursion was a, uh, non-existent drone excursion <laughs> due to, uh, me getting the van stuck in some mud. But I think the best part was, all of the attendees, everybody was in such good spirits. Like, this is hilarious. This is great. We're all having a good time. And yeah. it was really just about everybody hanging out, even though no drones were flown at all. <laughs> it, it, it worked out in the end. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm glad that there was a, whenever there was the recap video, there was like shots of everybody like, having fun. Like, oh, here's everybody at the restaurant. Here's everybody going on around town. Having, and then there's like just footage of the van just stuck in the mud. Like, and then there's the drone excursion over here. Don't worry about them. Like, just... <laughs> so good. I have so to give good. a shout out to Alyssa Best for that, by the way. She, uh, she's the one who edits all of that stuff on the fly. Like, like at this past venture, she was, she was really like being handed the footage and then the, would have the video done by like the next morning or whatever it was that, that evening or something. And so we were posting like fresh videos every day. I'm just in awe of that woman. She's incredible. And she was still able to like incorporate all of the really funny moments like your your drone excursion i was very surprised at how everybody handled that is that your favorite moment though <laughs> oh my gosh it, it was definitely the 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 most it was a highlight moments. um one of my favorite moments i made a shirt that had eric floberg's face on it <laughs> and him discovering that i was wearing it like the second day was was very very entertaining to me um that was a win <laughs> Uh, but otherwise, it's like like everybody's saying, it's 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 literally getting to hang out with people. And it's the little in between moments. It's not the moments where everybody's talking or like, oh, this big presentation. It's just like meeting people because I talk to a camera all day, every day, and so it's like, I I'm just talking to like the void, and I'm hoping there are people that are watching. <laughs> and so, <laughs> venture is so great because I can actually meet people, and they'll be like, oh yeah, I've seen you online. I'm like, you have? Oh good, have I been helpful? <laughs> okay, good. Like it just have I been helpful? It's affirming, you know. It's good. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Aww. man um 
I gotta give a shout out to Carl. Carl in the comments. Hey. <laughs> oh yeah. Glad you're here. Um, Eric Sloberg, do you have a favorite moment or a favorite memory? We wrap up. It, yeah. It's a. Uh, it's kind of going the same route as John. It's, I've just been racking my brain hearing all of these, and it's it's really hard to pinpoint one. And <laughs> they like basically mentioned all of them. Uh, I really really enjoy like enjoyed doing karaoke and just having so much camaraderie and it's so wonderful being in a room full of people socially where we all connect on literally just like one thing where it's you yeah. can walk up to anybody and small talk is super easy <laughs> because you just share a connection <laughs> on you, your default can just be where are you from what do you shoot what does your market look like what do you, you know what body do you shoot on it you have all those easy questions and that leads to so much more um, and so specific moment is really hard for me. I really loved the awards this past time. That was so much fun. Um, you were hilarious. I appreciate that. Um, sometimes I just feel like I'm too much of a dad. Uh, <laughs> the fun fact about me is that I just, I actually get really, really nervous <laughs> when I'm in front of people. Uh, and it might not seem like that, but uh, my heart's always racing. Uh, but it's always just so fun to look back. And the, the biggest overarching thing I have uh, as, far, ex, as far as experience is like, you just, you're just filled with so much like hope. And uh, mm -hmm. I know people use the word inspiration a lot, but I like the idea of, it's just, it's just so hopeful. Like you, you walk away from it being like, I have so many ideas of what I'm going to do in the coming months and years. It like the, both venture and another workshop I went to the physical like manifestation of, of learning and community is I'm I'm I believe that that's like the biggest thing that we can do as creatives in pushing us forward and inspiring us and, and giving us hope to to make the next thing happen it just pushes mm -hmm. us over that edge and between all of the interactions of different people I have seen online and have fanboyed over um uh, up to like meeting someone like Colin Steingard, who's like a really good friend of mine now, uh, who has helped me with various projects, uh, whether it be YouTube or education. Um, it's just awesome. It's so freaking awesome. And it's like one of the highlights of my year and it's just so much fun. Yeah. Uh, Aww. Well, thanks for saying that. Thank yeah. you. Well, Venture is one of the first places that I got to meet Matt Johnson's baby. Yeah, which is it's kind of a BYOB thing. It's not every time, but <laughs> not for a B so B big. bring your old baby. That's We're what it's for. She's, She's not coming this time. Don't worry. She's it was so big. It was <laughs> rough taking care of her. But, oh man. She's yes. Well, I think David, are you line? are you the last one, I believe, for venture memory? Yeah, for oh gosh. Um oh, there's another baby. I, I was like, no, I was paying attention to all the other uh, all the other people, and I don't remember uh, what my memory is. Let's see. I I do remember Matt holding, handing me his child, and then first starting to cry in my arms and not knowing <laughs> what to do, and Matt just looking at me like, "Bro, I thought you had a kid. Like, what? Come on, man!" <laughs> and Rachel coming over and being like, "Why did you hand our newborn baby to this person who clearly has never had the baby in his life?" <laughs> And then she your child away Hi, for like five or ten minutes. So that was that was a pretty good memory. Um, I think <laughs> I think the award ceremony was up there too. Watching Eric like scream through two hours of content in like fifteen minutes was uh, yeah. <laughs> and, and Chris coming up to so me and being like, we have we have two minutes. We have we have two minutes left. And Eric's like, and for our second award out of twenty. <laughs> out of 20 is huh? yeah oh my gosh eric just came up to me i just remember i just have it's like this picture perfect memory in my mind ingrained eric's face of him walking up to me saying i think this is going really great guys and i was like we gotta wrap this up in like 10 minutes buddy <laughs> his face was like, <laughs> like, like so, but anyway, was throughout the whole ceremony i would look at eric and eric was getting progressively more excited and then i would look yeah. at Christy and she progressively more just like this this has to end now this, this. 
but it's funny that it's still everybody's like one of their favorite memories because of how like just funny it all became it, it was just hilarious oh in the comments uh the three dominican sisters if y'all remember them from the last <gasps> yeah. one are on and they said that the it was uh definitely one of the ultimate experiences for them was remembering that that night that for was sure. such a fun night but well hey guys um, we got to go ahead and wrap up um yeah we just want to mention again for those that are tuning in uh venture workshop is a four-day workshop that will be hosted october 19th through the 22nd this year and we have over 10 to 15 speakers and just the people on here just some of them and we have more mm -hmm. and it's going to be an amazing experience this will be the fifth time venture is hosted over the course of three years so uh excited it's the if if you're a videographer and you're um, in the wedding industry this is definitely the place to be and we would love to have you join us and we just want to give every one of you a hug in person we want to hug each other i think we're so excited as well as teachers to just connect with other like-minded people that encourage and strengthen us in this industry and I think it's so important to con uh, connect on this level. So um, everyone, all the teachers, thank you so much for, for hanging out with us uh, today and, and taking your time. Not like you're really doing much else anyway, but uh, we <laughs> just want to say thanks yeah, right. for hanging out. We're going to continue to uh, connect and communicate with everybody. So um, everyone check out ventureworkshop.co for more information and you can pick out some tickets. Uh, we currently opened up some more. It was sold out, but we opened up some more tickets. So if you want to come. Yeah, you can we, uh, we know that October is a busy month uh, for some parts of the country. It's not like that big of a hot month for some parts of the country. It is like the hottest month. And we know that. And we're, we're so sorry. We wanted to make sure that we were rescheduling rather than canceling. And those dates in October uh, were some of the best fits for most of the teachers. And um, we were able to keep almost almost all of them. We, we were so sad that Jay and Mac and a little long distance aren't able to join us this year. But um, those dates are actually, we were hesitant to actually choose them because 19th is my birthday. I'll be turning 31. And the 20th is Kaylin's birthday. He'll be turning... It's going to be a party. 33. <laughs> and you don't even know how I am? 33. And uh, anyway, so we were hesitant about it, but I think we still are. It's going to be such a blast that, you know, it's almost like, well, we'll be hanging out with most of our friends anyway. Yeah. So it'll be fun. It's like it's our birthday party that we get to be a part of with you guys. So, so we've invited you all to our birthday in the form of venture. <laughs> I'm, just <kidding. laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, but we, uh, yeah, we're grateful that it all worked out with, with scheduling. We tried to keep it weekdays again. Yep, so, that, so Monday through Thursday. Yeah. yeah, to kind of keep weekends open for everybody because we know it's tricky. But with that, there were there were several attendees who weren't able to because of prior commitments, because of rescheduling, or because of being their busiest month of work. And so um, with that being said, we do have a couple more tickets that have opened up. And so um, if you are considering it or have been considering it, you're welcome to come. And um, we're excited to hang out with you guys this year in October and finally get to see you all again. So yeah. all right. Well, thank Thanks you all everybody for, joining. for hanging. We'll stay so in contact. Fun. It'll be fun. Yeah, yeah. Thank you all. Have Bye. a beautiful, beautiful day. Bye. All right. Thank you guys. Bye.